to today's episode of the Narratives of Grace podcast. Uh, today, Pastor Dennis and I will be discussing prayer. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be having a, a special uh, extended time of prayer in our evening service, and we thought it would be good to uh, meditate and discuss uh, prayer in our own lives and, and what we see in Scripture. Right. Prayer is obviously incredibly important. Um, I think it was um, Abraham Lincoln once said, you know, if you give me if you give me six hours to cut down a tree, I'm going to spend the first four sharpening the axe. And uh, and I, I kind of look at prayer that way, that prayer is what prepares us. Prayer is what uh, sustains us. It gives us our, our opportunity to um, now God already knows our heart here and he knows our thoughts but it gives us the opportunity to um, voice those things uh, to share those things but then we also know based on scripture that even when we're struggling to the point that we don't know the words to say uh, the spirit makes intercession the the son is seated at the right hand also making intercession they both pray according to the will of god because they know the mind of the father and so romans gives us some great insight as to what prayer is about and how it works when the father is is involved in that process but uh, for us as believers we we have to make sure that we uh, prioritize prayer yeah and and i think that's a big thing right now is that prayer is uh almost seen as a boring thing uh and i, I think in a large part that's because uh with with tv and media we don't like being alone with our thoughts so we don't like to bring those thoughts to god and we think they're not worth time. And I think uh, some of that comes from the skewed ideas of, well, he already knows. God already knows what the concerns are, so I don't need to bring them to him. And well, yeah, okay, he does. Um, that, that is true, but that's making a, a bad conclusion from a, a true assertion. That, that's not how any of this works. Exactly. And we see other areas of theology where that erroneous thinking works its way in. Where, well, if it's already been figured out or if it's already been decided, then what's the point of this or what's the point of that? And, you know, I, I, I like the uh, when you said, you know, we don't like to be alone with our thoughts. I think um, the excuse for prayer that a lot of people have is it's awkward because mm -hmm. it's just me talking. You know, we as conservative Baptists don't believe that uh, God audibly speaks back to us in that moment. Um, we do believe in the still small voice of God. We have to explain that at a later date, but, um, but I, I don't believe that you hear the audible voice of God speaking directly, giving you special revelation at this point. I think the special revelation that God intended for us to have is what we have in the completed canon of scripture. But um, but I used to I used to be sensitive to that argument because I, I kind of agree um, it is awkward um, to stand there and talk and no one you know there's there's no response uh, immediately uh, and then that then there was an app that came out uh, called Marco Polo and this app is a communicate a communication app um, but you sit there for 20, 30, 40, I don't know how long you talk, but you know, for, for each person it's probably different for me. It's a long time as you guys can probably tell, but, um, but I'll send videos to family members and, and friends. And um, I, I kind of used to feel that way about prayer. Like, you know, it, it is awkward to sit there and talk and talk and talk and then not have a response. But, but then you have this app that comes out and that's exactly what you do. It's a one-sided conversation you say everything you need to say send the video and then they respond so there is some response a little bit quicker and a little bit more noticeable than sometimes with prayer but um but i think we're starting to see now there's there's things out there that we can point to and say well you do this so let's focus back on prayer well and i think like a lot of things in spiritual life uh is that we don't understand that things take practice mm -hmm. Uh, so the first time I read scripture in a service, it did not go well. Uh, every so often still, it does not go well. But for the most part, I understand it now. I understand how to read things poetically. I understand how to read things with a, with a, a, a sense of, of function and fluidity to them. But that didn't just come out of nowhere. Now, part of that came from music and people yelling at me to read the poetry correctly. Uh, but a lot of it just came from reading scripture in services regularly. Um, 
my church in Texas, uh, they had a scripture reading and prayer ministries. And essentially all that was is that you're willing to read or pray in the service. So when, when we would plan the service, uh, where, and that, that's where I was the intern, um, we would pick the next person on the list. And some people asked to be more irregular than others, and that was fine. And um, me and, and uh, Dr. Annual were the like stand-ins and the other elders were stand-ins. Uh, so if somebody had to drop out, we had to be able to do it last second. But that meant sometimes I was reading scripture that I hadn't prepared. Uh, but it's the same thing with prayer. I kind of went on a, a long explanation for a simple thing, but prayer takes practice. Uh, not just yeah. praying in public, but prayer as a pra- as a discipline takes practice. Right. And that's what I was going to say. It's definitely a discipline. There, there are various spiritual disciplines, uh, and prayer is obviously one of them. It's something that um, Jesus takes the time to teach us how to pray uh, in what's commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. Um, that was not him teaching us what to pray, but how to pray. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think there's there's different styles. Um, there's the Acts model where you have the adoration first. There's the Cats model where you have the confession first. You know, there's, uh, and we can, if, if you feel the need, we can talk about those a little bit, but there's different styles of prayer. And there's also different, um, I guess there's different uses for prayer. Mm-hmm. You know, I had somebody one time there, they were teaching, it was, I was in, I guess, high school and they were teaching a Sunday school lesson. And they said, you know, prayers are not always these lofty expressions that are said in front of people, uh, which, you know, hindsight being 2020, well, you're not supposed to have these lofty things just because you're in front of people. But, um, but the goal and what he was teaching was, you know, it's not always going to be that. It's not always going to be, you know, brother so-and-so, would you close us in prayer? You know, it's not always going to be that public thing. He said, you know, if you're driving down the road and your car loses control, you know, and you just simply cry out, you know, not in an irreverent, not in a using his name in vain, but, you know, you cry out like, oh God. And like, that's, that's all you can get out to say, like, I need you. That's a prayer. Oh yeah. It's short. It's effective. (laughs) You know, um, you're calling on him to do something because you're in the middle of a completely uncontrollable situation for you. Um, so I think there are different methods to prayer. I don't, I don't know that, you know, if you say, well, my prayers are always short, you know, um, one thing we work with, I'm trying to work with Declan on is, you know, we pray for our food and trying to break out of the, just think of the food, amen, you know, and, and it's like, what? Well, I know he's omniscient, so I know he heard it, but do you understand what you just said? <laughs> like, do you know the words that you just spoke? And uh, we, we don't want to do it out of just simple duty. We don't want to, why, why do you pray? Because I'm supposed to, it should be more than that, you know? And so, but it, all that to say, it is definitely a discipline. It is something that we should be growing in. It's something that we should be developing in. We should not only be praying when we need stuff, we should be praying to praise him, which sometimes I, I believe that we should be praying just to talk to him. Yeah. Um, I think some of the, some of the most meaningful times of prayer have been times that I'm not asking for anything. I'm just talking to my father, you know, yeah. and, and I don't, I, I don't like to use myself as an example, but, but in my own personal life, the, those are some of the prayers that I think some of the times of devotion that have really been more meaningful to me it's just i'm not asking for anything i'm not i'm not begging i'm i'm just man you're good and i just just want to talk about how good you are and those are good times well and and that's really important and i think one of the the important things with that is is the idea that you know worship pure worship is worshiping god for who he is Mm -hmm. so you know the the top prayer should be talking to god because we can you know in the in the old testament they didn't have that in the same way that wasn't something that they were able to do in the same way. Now, people could lift up prayers. People were, were called to pray. Yeah, but there was still that divide. That divide wasn't healed yet. Now, God's omniscient, uh, God's omnipotent. He heard everything. But there is still a level of uh, inaccessibility. Uh, there was still a level of required sacrifices of required ritual that don't exist anymore. And I almost think that's part of what makes praying hard now. 
you know, if, if you go to one of the uh, branches of Christianity that are a little uh, less scripturally based and more tradition based, you'll see more physical acts to pray. You see lighting candles, you see um, doing certain hand gestures, you see this, that, or the other thing. Um, but the truth of it is, is we get to just go to God. Now, if, if you're lighting a candle to meditate on something, uh, there, there's other issues, I think, there. I, I don't think it's wholly wrong. And by holy there, I mean W. Um, but at the same time, you know, sometimes you might need a little something. But I, I think there, there's, like you mentioned, that there's models of prayer. And I think those are good because there are different types of prayer. And I think we need to go through them. I think it's too easy to just stick to one type, uh, which, you know, there, there's no, the scripture doesn't have a list of types of prayer. Uh, but in it, we see, you know, that there's prayers of adoration, prayers of thanksgiving, which I would say those are two different things. Uh, prayers of, of um, confession. Uh, and then the other two main ones to me are, are supplication um, and, and um, what's the other one? It was Thanksgiving. Um, yeah. Um, supplication and uh, it, it's praying for others on on their behalf pray you know make sally well again yeah the intercessory prayers intercessory is the other one and and those are similar but different um but you know you're asking god to um come and help with something um and and those are you know all good and they're all important now i i don't think anyone should come away with this like taking notes on those types other than there's other there's different things we should be praying for Right. Well, obviously we're, so we've talked about prayer as a discipline um, briefly, and obviously, you know, this is not an academic podcast uh, today. We're not, uh, I think you and I are just having a conversation about prayer uh, and the way that we feel about it. And, and I, I agree with everything you're saying. I, I think that we have kind of scratched the surface on prayer being a discipline. I think you uh, started to mention prayer as worship um, you know, it, it is it is something that we need to work at, and there are many different ways that we can utilize prayer. Prayer is a tool. Prayer is a weapon, I would say, uh, was in our fight against the darkness, uh, knowing that we have uh, we we have the ear of the Father that um, you know we can boldly enter um, His throne room and know that He is going to hear us. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that leads us to talk about, you know, how do you feel God answers prayers? And, you know, I, I like the, you know, yes, no, and not yet. Um, and, you know, I think there's different ways to say it. Some people say God says yes. Sometimes he says no. And sometimes he says, yeah, just you're just going to have to wait on that answer. Um, so not just a not yet as in, oh, well, it's going to happen. Just not right now. Sometimes it's like, yeah, you, just wait and see you know, I'll, I'll get back to you. You know, the answer is not as important to you right now. <laughs> and it's, those are the times that it's like, you know, man, I've been praying and I just don't see anything happening. And what we do is we say, you know, I don't see the results. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to stop. And that's the part of, you know, living the American dream that kind of pushes away and pushes against what scripture teaches, because, you know, we're, as Americans, we want what we want, and we want it now. That's why, you know, fast food is such a big thing. Uh, we want things instantly. We're, we live in a culture of instant gratification. You know, people post a status on Facebook, and 10 minutes later, they'll delete it if they haven't gotten any, li- any likes yet. And, and so I think we, we desire immediate results. If we invest something, we want to see an immediate return on our investment. We, we are not a, a people as Americans who typically have a great deal of patience. Prayer is, in a sense, an exercise in patience because you're making your requests known to God you're praying for and with one another, you know, uh, the book of James talks about, you know, laying on hands and, and praying for those who are sick and, and confessing our sins one to another. And so there's, there's many aspects that prayer fits into. There's many aspects of our, of our lives and our, our walk with Christ. Uh, but ultimately, um, if we're looking for immediate results and we don't see them, 
that hint, I, I think it can hinder our prayers and we just have to be really careful about that. Yeah. Well, and, and so the way I explain it sometimes is that, that prayer isn't trying to change God's mind. Uh, right. It's bringing requests and, and those things. Yeah. But we should always be seeking God's will in that. And, and so I think a large part of prayer that we don't appreciate today anymore is that prayer also shapes us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not, and, and we have such a sense in, especially in the, the, our society, like you described that, you know, well, if I do this, this will happen. Well, that's not how God works. Right. I do this and he'll do this to me. Like it, right. it, it's a, he shapes us. He, and, and that's, that's an important part of what prayer should be. And, and it's kind of like you were describing with the, the times of prayer where you're not really asking for anything. It's not a, a t- it's just a devotional time with the father. And, and that's part of what it is, is being shaped uh, by that, being shaped by the spirit, looking for wisdom. I think the number one prayer request I had through seminary uh, was wisdom. Um, and now I, I say that through seminary, it's not that I don't seek wisdom any longer, but it was <laughs> like, give wisdom on a, which job I should take kind of stuff. And, right, and right. I have no intention on changing jobs anytime soon. Uh, Good. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that's part of what we should be praying for is that kind of wisdom and understanding. Um, but when we look at prayer as an act of worship, it helps us understand it. This, this Sunday evening, we're, we're, like I, I think I said that we're going to be having the extended time of prayer before um, taking the Lord's Supper. Uh, but I'm still going to be giving a message. It, it'll be a little bit shorter than normal, but we're looking at, at the First Thessalonians uh, 4 and that idea of pray without ceasing and, and what that is and, and the praying uh, and thanksgiving. And uh, that's just prayer as worship, prayer as a way of asking God to shape us is really an important uh, aspect that I think we just totally miss today. Yeah. Well, go ahead and explain, because I think those who are listening have probably been to some of the services, because we've had more in the last nine months than we probably have in a, a long time before that, with taking time to really just focus on prayer. I, I think there was uh, one time recently that we we spent time, and we kind of divided it out. We're going to pray for, you know, the we're going to pray locally, we're going to pl- pray regionally, mm-hmm. we're going to pray nationally or, or globally. Um, then there were other times where it's like, we're going to pray for this specific need, then we're going to take some time to pray for that specific need. And uh, so we've done these uh, prayer, these nights of prayer, these evening services where the, the greater emphasis of the service is obviously worship, but it's worship through prayer. Mm-hmm. And so this particular week, you know, obviously I'm still in quarantine, so um, it's obviously up to you so explain how how is this sunday night gonna go so so the service will will the first half of the service will be like it normally would be where there'll be music and and worship through music and and uh the message on first thessalonians 4 um but then we're going to break and go into a a a time of prayer um it'll be led by by myself and, and two other church uh leaders Uh, And I'm actually looking at using the Acts model um, where we'll spend time in in adoration uh, and and I'll open it up to that. And and I'm going to invite people, if you feel called to pray out loud, Uh, I think that's an important thing that that we don't do. And and it is uncomfortable because, like you said, we've been doing more of these in the past nine months than we probably have in in a long time. Um, But we need to take that time to adore God for who he is. But then we're going to go into the time of confession. You know, the Acts model is based on Isaiah 6. You know, we, we recognize how glorious God is. And in turn, we recognize how unholy we are uh, or how fallen we are. Um, but then we'll go into the, the last time and, and each section. It'll probably depend on how long um, the music and, and my message goes. But the last section will be on Thanksgiving. And, and thanking God for that, that expiation, that forgiveness of sins that we get. Uh, now the Acts model ends with supplication. Well, that supplication is, is communion. Is that remembering we come uh, to him, we get to be before him. And uh, a, a supplication, that, that isn't quite what that means. But at the same time, it's that, um, it's that reminder that he has supplied our needs, that he has interceded for us. 
Um, so, so each section, like I said, it'll, it'll be led by a different uh, one of our, each of our leaders. Obviously, you won't be one since you're kind of stuck inside for a few more days still. Um, but we'll open it up, uh, give to people time to pray either privately or out loud, and then each of us will close it, the section. Uh, and it's just a good time to be able to pray as a church body, especially in crazy uh, uh, virus-laden times. Right. And then obviously this Sunday night is the Lord's Supper. And uh, and then, as you said, I think I think matching those two and, and wrapping things up with the supplication. And as you said, you know, seeing the communion, you know, what greater request can a human being have than you know, forgive me for my sins, take away the guilt of my sins and recognizing that's where we see that it was done, the body that was broken, the blood that was spilled on our behalf. And, and so that entire evening, I think just moves from one point to the next point. And it allows, it allows folks to engage um, because, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in every, in every, evening that we've had i couldn't hit the mute button fast enough <laughs> um, but in every uh, evening time of prayer that we've had we we ask folks to pray with us at their seats and you know if they feel led to pray out loud go for it if they um you know if they feel led to just pray silently that's fine if they pray to just remain in silence and just listen to the prayer that's being offered that's that's fine too uh, i think the last one that we did there was an opportunity for parents to take that time for especially fathers to take that time and pray with their children, um, pray over their families. And, and I think that was a special time, but I think each time we do this, there's a slightly different aspect. And, and I know we keep saying we've done this more in the last nine months than we have in a long time. There's also this global pandemic that's been happening for the last several months. And so there's a reason why we're taking a, a more dedicated time of prayer and I think what this has shown us is whether there's a global pandemic or not, there should be a great emphasis placed on prayer. Uh, whether things are going well or things are going poorly, whether we're receiving blessings or we feel like we're cursed, um, we need to sit back and take time to pray and thank God for who he is. Because in the midst of our struggles we know that prayer does change things. Mm -hmm. We know that prayer is powerful. Um, I remember my grandmother on my dad's side was uh, had an aneurysm and they needed to go in and do surgery. And the doctors explained, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to go in, but where the, where the aneurysm is, it's a really risky place. And so you know, there's going to be all of these complications. And so they explained, you know, it's next to the optical nerve. It's, it's right next to this part of the brain. And, and so by, but we have to go through this part of the brain to get there. And so there may be speech issues. There may be fine motor skill issues. There may be um, thought progression that, that may be lacking after this. She's definitely going to be blind and we're not sure if she's going to be able to walk. And, uh, and we're like, but she'll be okay though. <laughs> and they were like, well, yeah, it's just super risky. And man, I, we had everybody we knew praying. And I was at uh, Bible college at the time. And, you know, I got up and I asked school and, and everybody to be praying. And, you know, friends of mine at the school were praying. And I remember getting the phone call. Surgery was done. The doctor felt good about it. Everything seemed okay. She was in recovery. Um, but she woke up and the first thing she did was she looked at her husband and she said, hey, love you. And it was like, so she saw him. And she recognized him and she sat up to talk to him, like all things that they're like, I don't know, she's going to be able to do this stuff. So for us, we looked at that. And I'm like, man, what a powerful um, thing prayer is. Uh, now, again, and I always feel like whenever I talk about like certain areas of theology, I always feel like, you know, just because that happened for us it doesn't mean that that's always going to happen, that God always answers the prayers th that way. But there are people that you look at scripture and they would say that there are times when it seems like God changed his mind. Now we know that God is omniscient, so he knows all things. So it's obviously not that God learned something. It was like, oh, you know what? You guys are right. My bad. We'll fix it. 
you know, God always knows what he's going to do. And I don't believe that there are contingencies with God, but yet you have uh, God being angry with the Israelites and Moses praying on their behalf. And God's like, fine, I'm not going to, I won't kill them, you know? And, uh, and then you have Jonah uh, where the people from the King all the way down repented and were offering prayers to God. And it literally says, depending on your translation, some translations say God relented and some say God repented. And that means mm. a change of direction. And so now was it prayer that did that? Was it obedience that th did that? Um, I'd say, yes. Is it also God kn knew what he was going to do that entire time? And so uh, wherever you line up on that issue, theologically, all three whatever avenue you're looking at that, whatever one of those three areas, and I'm sure there are more, but in each one of those, prayer is necessary. Um, so if if you have the ability to change the the course of, of events, which I don't think that you do, I think that prayer is an obedience thing and it's a worshipful thing. It's, a, it's an opportunity for you to make your requests that God already knows, but make them known. Um, you know, when a kid does something wrong, the mom already knows what they did, but they want to hear the kid admit it. They want to hear what they said and, and, and hear that they know that what they did. And, and I think there's a lot of that in prayer. So all of that to say, there are many different aspects of prayer that are helpful. There are many different aspects of prayer that uh, we can sometimes see immediate results. Sometimes we, it takes a, a while to see the results, but in every area, Orthodox Christianity will t will tell you prayer is always necessary. Yeah, and and I recognize that, like I, we've been saying, it's a discipline, and disciplines take practice. Uh, so for everyone that feels like they need to improve on their prayer life, which I would include myself on that, that's one of the things that I'm uh, focusing on for this internship that I'm going through right now is, is the the personal times of of devotion, which include that. Uh, not just praying for certain things, but just devotional prayer. Uh, use one of the models. Uh, plan a time. Have a t It doesn't need to be long. I it can be five minutes. And you don't need to be praying the whole time. Just say at 8.05 uh, until 8.10, I'm going to be in a time of prayer. Uh, mute your phone. Silence it. Make sure it won't buzz and bother you because it's only five minutes. And, and go through one of these models. I, I recommend the uh, X model partially because it is based on Isaiah 6 and that's good. Um, but you know, you go from the adoration, just thinking about who God is and what he's done, not because he saved me, just because he is the savior uh, and things like that. And then spend a minute or two in times of confession and then Thanksgiving, which that's the time, thank you God for saving me and, and praise you for that but then end with the supplication, man, today's going to be a rough day because I have to do things that I, uh, at my job that stress me out, man, just help me, keep me calm, uh, keep Betsy safe in the hospital as she's going through appendix, you know, th th those types of things. Um, that That's, I recommend that model. Uh, there's others, you've mentioned uh, other ones, you can look them up. You can also just have a list of things to be praying for, including that. Um, but I think that's probably the best way to improve on that is just spend that time in prayer, have a prayer list. When, when you get a thing or, or things come up at the church or wherever, make a list. Um, mm -hmm. One of my professors said, don't, don't say that you'll pray for it and then don't because that is lying. Um, right. and, and it's, it's not a dangerous thing. It's not, God's not going to act because this one person said they're going to pray and they didn't. Uh, but you know, it's an, it is an important thing. If you say you're going to pray, make, write it down, text yourself, whatever. Uh, but just take that time uh, as a discipline, like you would with practicing an instrument or working out. You need to have that scheduled time to prepare and work on that discipline and, and eventually extend it. And eventually it'll become uh, what you think it should be right out of the gate. But we need to stop thinking that, you know, times of prayer need to be an hour long. Uh, I, I remember our, our uh, podcast on family worship and, and uh, Logan said how he and his wife spend an hour in prayer sometimes. And I'm like, that, that's for the veterans, like work your way up. Don't expect you need to start at an hour. Uh, if you call, if you, if you go for it and that works for you, great, but don't be right. discouraged because you can't match somebody that's 
uh, worked at that discipline. Right. And especially there may be some that struggle with prayer. So I'll say this very quickly as we wrap up. Um, I, there are some that struggle with prayer. Uh, there's a there's many good books. A.W. Tozer has a great book on prayer. Um, R.C. Sproul wrote a fantastic book called The Prayer of the Lord. And uh, I've actually used that book in, in a couple of circumstances to, to actually teach through um, prayer. And so there are many good things out there, good tools like, like um, Caleb, you were saying uh, there are many different models to, to work through. You know, if you're struggling to pray or you're saying, yeah, I just, I just don't know how or I don't know what to do or how to work on that, contact us, mm -hmm. uh, reach out. We would love to talk with you and, and, to, um, and to share with you some, some thoughts and, and to, to walk through that. Because especially if you faced trauma, um, you know, I talk about the, the way that I pray, I, I talk about appealing to God's character. You know, there's times that I'm just talking to my father, but there's times that I'm talking to the sovereign king of kings and lord of lords that he's the only one in power to, to fix this. And then there's times that I'm talking to my savior. Um, mm -hmm. And you, so I, I, I try to pray to him, you know, in the way that I'm talking, the way that I'm asking, you know, there's times that I'll be a little bit more casual, but then there's times where it's completely reverent and realizing, you know, I'm in the throne room of the king and, and I need to have some decorum here in the way that I respond to him. But, um, but again, that it takes time. Um, it is a discipline that you have to work through, but getting started is, is easy. Um, talk to somebody, reach out and, um, and we would love to have that conversation with you. Amen. Well, let's end this, uh, uh, podcast with a brief scripture reading, uh, and prayer. So this is the, the um, text that I'll be preaching from uh, Sunday evening, I said 1 Thessalonians 4, it's 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, but it's 5, 15 through 18, and it says, see that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's a great passage. Well, let's pray and uh, we'll close out. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for uh, every opportunity that you give us to, to have these discussions. I pray for each person listening that they would be encouraged, that, that they would not see these, these podcasts or conversations as, as uh, rambling, but that they would see it as uh, a helpful tool and, and something to encourage them. And, and so, Father, I, I just thank you for the technology you've blessed us with and the opportunity that you've given us to serve you in this way. And so Father, for those that are struggling to pray, those that are hurting, they've, they've experienced some trauma or they've experienced some difficulty and, and uh, they're, just, they're just hurting. You know who they are. Father, it's your own word that specifically says that you are near to the brokenhearted. Uh, but your word also tells us that we do not mourn as those who are believers. We do not mourn as those without hope. We know where our hope lies. Father, help us to see that in you. Help us to trust you. Help us to love you. Help us to serve you. Help us, um, both Pastor Caleb and myself, to, to be available and willing to help those who are hurting, those who are needing. Uh, needing, whether it's talking, whether it's needing more prayer. Um, Father, just give us wisdom. Give us discernment. Uh, help each one of us to come to you openly sharing with you our thoughts, sharing with you all the things that you already know, but doing it in obedience, but doing it so that our relationship with you would grow. Uh, we thank you for what you're already doing. We can thank you in advance of what you're going to do because we know that you are good and your plans are perfect. So again, we thank you for what you're going to do. We ask that you give us a good rest of this day and that you bless those who are listening and those who are um, maybe unavailable and they can't listen. I just pray that you would bless Milanani Baptist Church and continue to use us to shine our light well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Narratives of Grace podcast. We hope that this message was a blessing to all of you that joined in with us today. For any questions or comments on this or any other messages, please email us at pastor at mbaptist.org. If you have any requests for future podcasts, uh, you can also email us at pastor at mbaptist.org. For any prayer requests, please email us at prayer at mbaptist.org. We want to be praying with and for each and every one of you, whether you're a member of our immediate church family or not. We want to be able to uh, pray for all of you out there that listen with us. 
For more information on Mililani Baptist Church, please visit our website at mbaptist.org or follow us on social media and YouTube. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you'll join us next time. Thank you.